Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, afternoon, everyone here, and good afternoon to everyone watching us on Facebook. Or at least we hope we're watching us on Facebook because we're using a different streaming service this week. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hopefully you're getting us. Uh, welcome to this service. It's great to welcome you here in person and to welcome those watching at home. A couple of reminders, please keep a social distance at all times. Sadly, we can't sing, but our worship leader will sing to us. Uh, please remain seated for the service, because that apparently is less of a health risk, uh, apart from when coming forward for Holy Communion. Robert will give you guidance on Holy Communion when, it, when we come to it, but basically we have a one-way system, up through the centre, back through the side aisles. Uh, other thing worth saying is that there's no offering plate passed around at the service. If you want to make an offering, there's uh, what I'm told is a, a very stylish IKEA bucket at the back of the church labelled offering. Uh, and you need to drop your offering into there. That'll be brought forward by the lovely Justine um, at the end of hymn number four. So, welcome. Oh, one more thing to say, please fill in the track and trace card. Um, and leave it in the box at the back again before you leave. That's in case something bad happens so we know that you uh, have been here. Cars will be kept for one month and then they'll be shredded securely. So we're going to start with prayer and praise uh, as usual and Richard is going to lead us in prayer and praise. I'm going to retreat to the keyboard enjoy our worship. You're my joy, my right to 
Almighty God, who forgives all who are truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon us and set us free from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our special prayer for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you so many good things beyond our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you above all else, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can hope for, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, last Sunday we started a new theme on the basis, Who Are We? And today we're continuing that. We're God's diverse people. You can see all our flags here. And Robert's going to be talking to us about being God's diverse people uh, in a moment. But Iris is going to read to us first. Uh, if your flag's not there, talk to Carol after this. And our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, from verse 19. You'll find it again on your yellow slip sheet. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, and reading from verse 14 to 18. John, chapter 10, reading from verse 14 to 18. Hear the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me. And I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down of my own accord. I, also, I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it, take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the gospel of the, of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Now, as uh, Dave has just said, um, we are uh, we have flags in front of us here. Um, probably, I think, bad manners. I, I should really say good morning or good afternoon to all of you here in the church, and good afternoon to those watching at home or wherever you may be. And if you are able to, especially for those at home, um, if you're able to, um, if you see the flags 
up above behind me, and those who are here can see all the flags up here. As David said, if you um, come from a country that, and your flag is not up here, um, please let us know so that we can find uh, your flag and put it up here as well. So I'm going to start with uh, a little quiz. Uh, actually, not a quiz. I'll, I'll start with just a question. Can, can you all see uh, the flags up here? Are you able to see them well? Yes. Yep. Yes? All right. Okay. Can you see your flag up here? If you can, just raise your hand, if you can see the flag. And those at home, I don't know if you're able to see them. Um, if, yeah, it's a bit narrow, okay? Apologies for that. Um, so you, you can see. So just name them. Don't shout, please. Just name the countries where you come from. Wales. Wales. Nigeria. Yes. Nigeria. Nigeria, yes. That's it? Ghana, yes. Biafra, oh my lord. Afghanistan, thank you, well done. And these flags represent the people who come here to worship St. John's. They represent the different people who come and worship together as a family, as one family. I'm not sure about the whales. Um, anyway, but we all come together as, as Australia is there as well, I think. Yes, at the end. Yes. But we come together as one family, and we are a diverse family, as you can see. And that's a wonderful thing about St. John's. Um, we are a church of many people, and we are a very diverse church. And over the uh, coming weeks, we started uh, last week, and over the next uh, few weeks, we'll be looking at our identity as a church. We are a forgiven people. And today we are looking at a diverse people, different people from different places. And it's not just about the flags. Within our countries, wherever you may come from, there are different places you probably come from as well, and different dialects you may have. I know in Nigeria there are several dialects, in Ghana as well, and many other African countries as well. Perhaps Wales as well. Um, I think in part of they speak in a different way from the people who speak. But we are all different, but one in Christ. And as I was saying earlier to, to, to the congregation at 10 a.m., one of the wonderful things about St. John's is that we come together and share in the wonderful food. Now, unfortunately, we can't do that now because of, of the pandemic um, issues and so on. But Generally, when, when, you know, before the lockdown and all this, um, we would always come together and eat something together. And that was a wonderful fellowship. But we came together as one body. We came together as one in Christ. Because Christ is for everyone. Christ is not just for the Jews. Christ is for the Gentiles. And all the diversity within that. Now, the passage in Revelation um, tells us a very interesting story. It tells us about um, a, a very big multitude of people. John is speaking about a, a vast crowd of people standing in front of the Lamb of God. They're standing in front of Jesus. And they're all shouting um, praises to Jesus. And he says, there were so many, no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the Lamb and praising Him. And they were all dressed in white robes, not blue jeans, not uh, Levi jeans or anything, but white robes, because that was a, a symbol of Christ's righteousness. They were all together in Christ. We are all here together in Christ. We are different, different people from different places, but we gather together in Christ. And th they stood and shouted, praise to the Lord, glory to the Son of God, glory to the Lamb of God. And perhaps here at St. John's, we are a small reflection of what 
John was speaking about in heaven. Now let us try a, a little thing here. Again, we can't shout. You can just speak um, the words um, that um, I ask you to do, to do. Now, for those at home, of course, you can do whatever you want. You can shout as loud as you can. But for, the, for those of us here, um, let us keep our voices low. But I want us all, in our languages, whatever that language may be, I want us all to say hello in your language. If you want to turn to somebody around you, just say hello in your language. Okay, one, two, three. Hello. Yeah, wonderful. That's good. Excellent. All right. This is wonderful because we all have different languages, different tongues, as the Bible says. Now I'm going to give you one more test. All right. In your language, again, some of us will probably say I speak English because, you know, that's, that's, I was brought up speaking English. That is fine. That could be the language that you speak. That is okay. Now I want you to say, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I'll repeat that. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You want to repeat that? One, two, three, go. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Dave was cheating here, speaking English. All right. That's what he's <laughs> All right. But salvation indeed belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And that was sung over and over, Cheer, singing to the Lord, singing to Jesus, for salvation belongs to Him, not to us, not to our private efforts, not to our religious efforts, not to our denominational efforts, not to our strength, but to Him, because He died on the cross for each and every one of us here. Now, in, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he writes the Ephesian church and he encourages them. And he says, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. A stranger is somebody you don't know. For, for, for the children in the room, I'm sure your, your moms and your dads will say to you, don't talk to strangers. Because you don't know who they are. Don't talk to strangers. And rightly so. I would probably say the same for adults as well. Don't talk to strangers because you don't know who they may be. You know, but don't talk to strangers. But we are no longer strangers in Christ. And he also says, we are no longer foreigners. Now, for most of us here who come from other countries, you probably, maybe, I don't know, came with a different passport. Is that correct? Yes, and for those here at home, you may have a different passport. This is a passport from Uganda, and the flag is right up there. It was given to me because I was a citizen of Uganda. I belonged to the Republic of Uganda. This passport is mine, but it doesn't actually belong to me. It belongs to the government of Uganda. You understand what I'm saying? Because it, it gives me the permission to be a citizen of that country. But in this country, this passport makes me a foreigner because I don't belong here because of this passport. As long as I hold this, I'm a foreigner. However, if I change the passport and I got a passport for this country, I am no longer a foreigner in this country, technically. I am no longer a foreigner because now I belong to this country by virtue of this passport. And Paul is saying, we are no longer foreigners. We are not strangers outside of God's kingdom. Because we now belong to his kingdom. We belong to his family. We belong to him because of what he has done for us. And then he says, we are also members of his household. Yeah. You remember all the talk through the pandemic, speaking about you should sh uh, uh, shield, uh, I think it was, isolate with members of your household yeah. and stay with the people you live with. They may not necessarily be your family, 
but they are the people you live with. They're members of your household. We now are members of the same household. We belong to each other. We, we are part of one another because we belong to the household of faith in Christ Jesus. He then says in verse 20, we are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Now, a cornerstone is um, usually a big block of uh, whatever it may be, mason, that is started for the building of a house. So, for example, if, if a big building is being constructed, there's usually some kind of a foundation. Or if a wall is being constructed, you have a foundation. And it is upon that foundation that the wall or the rest of the building is constructed. Jesus is our foundation. He is the cornerstone of our faith. He is the cornerstone of our identity. He is the cornerstone of our lives as believers in Christ. Not the Church of England. The Church of England is not the cornerstone of your faith. Please, let's get that straight. Whoever's listening, that's fine. It is not, nor is the Catholic Church the cornerstone of your faith, or the Baptist Church, or the Presbyterian Church, or whatever denomination you might belong to. No, Jesus is the cornerstone of your faith. These are, the Catholic Church and all the others, are merely traditions that we use and follow for worship. But the cornerstone of our faith is Christ himself. And in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple. We are joined to one another in Christ Jesus. We are joined in him. And in him, we too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his, in his spirit. Now, in the Gospel of John that I just read, Jesus introduces himself as the good shepherd. Has anybody ever seen a shepherd before? Anybody seen a shepherd? Yes? At home, but, but you may have seen a shepherd. But Jesus is using an illustration of a person who looks after sheep. But he uses the word good shepherd, not a bad shepherd, not a shepherd who runs away from the sheep when there is danger. He stays with us in our troubles, in our problems. He stays with us when things are very difficult. He stays with us when you are facing fire, when you have pain in, you know, in your body or whatever it may be, he will stay with you. And he made the promise, I will be with you till the end of the, the days, till the end of the earth. I will remain with you. I will not abandon you. This is Jesus. I am the good shepherd, he says. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know him. Just as he knows the Father, the Father knows him. And he lays down his life for the sheep. He's willing to die for the sheep. And then he goes on to say, he has other sheep that are not of the sheep fall. Jesus came to the nation of Israel, and that is where he began his ministry. But what he was saying was, there are other sheep, other people that he needs to, to speak to, to communicate to. There are others whom he needed to bring into this sheepfold. We are the others that he came to bring into that sheepfold as well. So what, what do we say with this? Well, sometimes people say to me, why are there so many churches? Why are there so many denominations? Why are there, you know, do they all believe in the same thing? Do they all believe in Jesus? And sometimes people say things like, oh, well, I suppose we all believe in the one God and that kind of thing. Well, the, th the unique thing about the Christian faith is this. Jesus is at the center of what we believe. There are many, there are many churches, there are many denominations, but these are probably traditions that people use 
to, to come to the Father, to come to Christ. But they are not the answer to their faith because Jesus is the answer to our faith. We are many, but we are one body because we all share in the one bread. And we're going to say that very shortly. We are many. We are all diverse in this church and in the body of Christ. We are many, but we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Not the wafers on the table, but the one bread, his body, the body of Christ. So brothers and sisters, we are many, we are a diverse people, but we are one body because we all share in Christ. We all belong to Christ. So let us go and tell others, let us share with others that many we may be, but there is one faith, one Christ, one baptism, one Jesus, whom we all believe in. Amen. Amen. I was in the years in prayer. So let's pray. Our Father, we want to just thank you for the privilege of being your people. Lord, that in Christ we are your people gathered together. In Christ we are united. And Lord, we thank you that you live among us by your Spirit. Lord, we pray that you would teach us how to be your people together. Help us to care for one another. Help us as a body to care for those outside. To reach out with that good news of Jesus. To show people what the cross is about and what forgiveness is about in him. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done for us. We give you our praise, Lord. And Lord, we want to pray for those in your family across the world who are suffering. Lord, we pray for those, particularly those Christians who are in prison. Lord, we know that while this pandemic is going on, that many of them are in great danger, that there's, prison, there's a COVID going on in all the places where they're held. Pray, think of those who are held in containers in Eritrea, those who are held in cramped conditions. Lord, we pray for your mercy for each one of your people. We pray, Lord, for their deliverance. We pray that they may know your presence with them and your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray too for those who are sick. Lord, we come to you because we know that you are our healer. And we pray, Lord, that each one that we know before you may know that you are with them, that you hold them in your hands, Lord, that your will will be done. So, Lord, we pray for Andrew. We pray for Lennox. We pray for Minto, for Margaret, for Ego, for Alex. We pray for all who have the virus, whether they're at home or in hospital, and for those who care for them. Pray for your healing, Lord. We pray too for Divine, for Janet, for Francis, for Mercy. Lord, we just lift them to you, ask that your will be done. And Lord, we give you thanks for the life of Chuck's father, Samuel. Lord, we thank you that he was a man of faith. And we pray for his family at this time. We pray for your comfort. We pray, Lord, for your guidance as they deal with all that follows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the government as they make decisions. Lord, sometimes we're not really clear, but Lord, we pray that your wisdom may prevail, that the right decisions will be made. Pray that for our local authority too, in all that they decide, all that they do, that you would lead them. And we pray for peace on our streets. Lord, we thank you that our churches are open. Thank you that we can come together. We pray, Lord, that having an open church would be a blessing to people around. Lord, that you would draw them in to come into your presence. And we thank you, Lord, that this is the first Sunday when Christ Church will be meeting together as a church on Zoom. Lord, we pray that for all those who have been invited, that they'd remember to get online 
We pray for Dan and Emmy as they lead the worship, as they lead that time together. Lord, we pray for your spirit to speak to people. We pray that you will be present in their worship together. And we pray that you would bless that church, Lord, and help it to grow. To grow in the knowledge of you, to grow in numbers. Lord, we just lift it to you and we thank you that you're in the midst of that work. We thank you for all that you have done down there. Just bringing people in. Lord, we bring these prayers to you in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would send us out, Lord, to serve you day by day. You know what's coming in our week. Lord, go ahead of us, guide us, and lead us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to share in peace, and with those at home, we share the peace with you as well. As one body, as one church, as one people, we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us share with one another the sign of the peace and peace be with you at home as well. We're going to sing hymn number four now. Uh, as I said at the beginning, there is no offering at this service. If you want to make an offering, uh, please put it in the uh, rather stylish IKEA bucket on the cupboard at the back. Again, we can't send it on the collection of for health reasons. Um, the bucket will be brought up during the final verse of hymn number four. And Rich is going to lead us in singing. I will sing the wondrous story. Please mumble behind your masks.
give you thanks for these gifts. We lift them up to you and all those who have given in different ways. We ask you, Lord, that you may bless this, the work of your kingdom, to your glory forevermore. Amen. We're now going to share our communion. And for those who are at home, if you are able to, um, to share the communion with us as well. And your communion and words are all written on the yellow sheets that you have. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us as in, as in your children. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We'll share in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. As I said, those at home can join us by faith as we um, share the communion together. Um, for those here in the church, um, if you wish to receive communion, please come down through the middle aisle. And when you receive the communion, please go out to the side, to back uh, to the place where you were sitting. Um, when you come to the front, please uh, hold out your hand, extend your hand as far as you, as you possibly can, and we'll drop the wafer into your hand. We won't say any words uh, because the blessing has already been done. So, brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. 
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll join in the prayer after communion on your yellow sheets. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Okay, got some notices and some birthdays. Uh, and it's a special occasion uh, because at 2.30 this afternoon uh, we have the first Sunday service of Christ Church Three Mills. It'll be a Zoom service uh, led by Dan. And we commissioned Pat and Eula this morning who are going off to join uh, Dan's Christ Church Three Mills uh, team. So please do pray. Uh, for this service. If you're able to, you're welcome to join in uh, with the Zoom service. There's lots of details on how to get the link here. Um, but for now, worship will be by Zoom. The hope is as soon as Dan finds somewhere to meet, uh, there'll be a, a personal gathering somewhere in the females area. So please do pray for them. That's uh, kicking off at 2.30 this afternoon. I know Dami is going to be part of the, the Christchurch team, but uh, he's, he's not here this morning, so we can't commission him and send him out. Um, next service today is 18.30, that will be a repeat of this morning communion service. Uh, and if you enjoyed this one so much, you are very welcome to come along. Um, our teaching for the summer is, who are we? Inevitably, coronavirus and lockdown have changed us as a church. And it's a good time to think about our values, about our vision for the future. So, uh, from now until the end of August at least, we'll be thinking about what it means to be God's love at the centre of Stratford in a new way. Uh, and next week, uh, we'll be thinking about being a people of prayer. And Robert's uh, going to be telling us about being God's praying people, because he's, he's a good prayer for persons. Uh, yeah. If you can't see your flag there, uh, then do tell us. Uh, apologies, we'll make sure it gets printed out, laminated and added to the display. Um, this week, we will do personal prayer from 11 till 2. Um, and everyone's welcome to come in if you, if you want to. This is Monday to Saturday. Church Council meeting tomorrow night. Uh, we're aiming to meet in person, but those who can't meet in person may be able to join us by Zoom. Jimmy and Tolo are doing some exploratory work to see how we can make Zoom work in the Christchurch room after this service. So, hopefully, many thanks for the, all the hard work. Uh, there's no Tuesday service at the moment, but there'll be Thursday Holy Communion in church at 12.30. And again, that will be a repeat of this service, but without music. Next Sunday, we're meeting at 10, at 12, and at 18.30. Um, and Christ Church Three Mills will be meeting at 2.30. Uh, now, I think that's it on the notices, apart from to do the birthdays. Um, I've got some birthday cards here. Uh, if you're watching, guys, happy birthday to Trina Buire, who is 14 uh, this week. Uh, Trina is 14 on Friday. Happy birthday, Trina. Um, happy birthday to Morta Mortat, who is 15 on Wednesday. Um, I'm sure everyone's giving you a virtual round of applause on Facebook. And uh, a, a real round of applause. Well done, yes. Uh, also got um, birthday, it's, it's Stephanie O'Coy's birthday on Wednesday. Stephanie, if you're logged on, happy birthday to you. Uh, it's Vivian Nassima's birthday on Thursday. Uh, Vivian, happy birthday on Thursday. It's Valerie Tunstall's birthday on Saturday. Valerie, uh, I, I guess you're watching. And uh, it's Carve's birthday, Carve Alizade. Carve, give us a wave. Yes, Carve's birthday on Wednesday. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's this week uh, on Wednesday. Uh, any more birthdays? No, nope. if I haven't mentioned your birthdays, because you haven't given me your date of birth. Uh, that's it uh, on, on the notices. Uh, Thank you for being part of this service. We're going to end by Richard singing uh, a blessing, and then Robert's going to send us out with a blessing. So let me dash back to the keyboard.
fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be among you, this day and forever. Amen. Let's go in peace to love, to, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.